In this video, we'll talk about the concepts of core promoter elements. So core promoters are generally defined as a stretch of DNA that directs the initiation of transcription. So the general transcription factor binds to these core promoter elements and initiate the recruitment of RNA pol 2 thereby transcription starts. So transcription at the core promoter is mediated by the basal transcription machinery or the pre-initiation complex. Now there could be different types of promoter and core promoter elements. The promoter is comprising of several core promoter elements. There could be upstream core promoter elements such as the so-called Tata box or BRE elements which is situated upstream to the transcription start site. There could be also downstream promoter element which is located downstream to the so-called transcription start site. Question is how long is a core promoter element? Core promoter element can be roughly 100 base pair to 1000 base pair long depend on a specific gene and a specific promoter element. Okay, these are examples of some generic core promoter element such as BRE, Tata, INR element, DCE, DCE2, DPE, all these kind of elements. So don't think all these elements exist in a promoter. These are majority of the possibilities that a core promoter can be. So in a real life scenario, there would be particular combinations of these which would exist in a, a promoter element. And there are specific proteins that can bind to these kind of promoter elements such as TF2B binds specifically to the Brie element, TF2D binds to the Tata box element, etc. Now there are no universal core promoter element that are present in all the promoters. So there would be some combination of promoter elements present in one gene, a completely different combination can be present in another gene. There are different types of uh, core promoter elements important for different kind of transcription factor binding. Now let, let us understand this with an example. So in one case let's say Tata box or BRE are together present in a promoter element. That can be one situation. There could be other situation where DCE or DPE uh, are together. So that is another situation. But you won't find Tata box, Brie, DCE, DP all together in one gene promoter. That's not possible. Now there are two different classes of promoters known as focused promoters and dispersed promoters. Focused promoters are those promoters where the transcription start site are very unique and at one particular point. And these kind of promoters are seen for regulated genes. And dispersed promoter has transcriptional start site at many locations. And these are va valuable for any kind of like housekeeping genes. Now, let's talk about the canonical core promoter elements. We have already discussed what are some examples of canonical core promoter elements. But besides them, there are non-canonical core promoter elements which doesn't have any of these uh, known, well-known, well-characterized promoter elements. It just has a broad region designated as core promoter element and these are known as non-canonical ones such as CPG islands, ATG desert and also the transcription initiation platform or TPI, TIPs. So these are pretty much non-canonical and they are discovered recently. Previously, People even didn't appreciate that they are, there are these kind of promoter elements. So it turns out if we think about Tata box that is present in only a very selected set of transcripts. But Tata box is most characterized. That's why we see it in the books. So let's talk about the transcription initiation, the role of core promoter element in this uh, particular process. So Tata box core promoter is really important for the TF2D2 bind. TF2D has the Tata box binding protein as a subunit which binds to the particular DNA and TAF or Tata box binding protein associated factor is a transcription activation domain. So it interacts with other molecules. So 
in this example the tf2d can actually distort the dna architecture it can create a 90 degree almost 90 degree bend and it interacts with the dna with the help of beta pleated sheet which is non typical to any transcription factor generally transcription factor interacts with each other with the dna uh, via alpha helix all these kind of nitty gritty details about uh, the transcription factor binding and general transcription factor binding to the core promoter element came from extra crystallographic studies. Later on, TF2B binds to the DNA just adjacent to the Tata box, which is the Brie element. So, Brie element and Tata box often coexist together in a core promoter. Eventually, other components like TF2B. 2F, TF2E, TF2H would bind. TF2H would phosphorylate the tail of the RNA polymerase, which is a start signal for the RNA polymerase to move along the gene and thereby transcription starts. Now, let me tell you, there are strong promoters, there are weak promoters. How do you know what are strong promoters and weak promoters? So, the readout is very simple. The amount of RNA that are produced, strong promoter would produce more and more rounds of transcription, so more mRNA would be produced. One can use reporter gene assays where they place a reporter gene such as a GFP coding sequence underneath a particular promoter to understand and ask the question whether it's a strong promoter or a weak promoter. So in this example, you can see hypothetically two molecules of GFP are produced. And in the next example, you can see four molecules of GFP are produced. So obviously, the promoter on the right hand side is a stronger promoter than the left hand side and this can be figured out using reporter gene assay the fluorescence intensity will indirectly show us how strong a promoter is in this case okay now when we talk about the uh, promoter elements we have to think about the histone signatures in the promoter element because all these histone signatures would determine many aspects most of the cases core promoter elements are nucleosome free regions there are other situations as well. Mostly, there are specific histone modifications are associated with promoter-associated nucleosomes. One of the modification is H3K27 trimethylation and another modification is H3K4 trimethylation. H3K4 trimethylation opens up the DNA near the promoter region whereas H3K27 trimethylation makes it more condensed. So the type of histone modification that is associated with the promoter region DNA would determine the fate of transcription. Anyway, there are techniques like chip sequencing which can tell us about what type of histone variants are present in the core promoter element. Chip sequencing against H2AZ variant of histone, histone uh, mo molecule found out that this particular histone is highly enriched in the transcription start site. Whereas the H3.3 is pretty much all over the place in the along the gene body as well as in the promoter. So these kind of small modifications and small signatures are really important to understand how promoter elements are bringing out the transcription. I hope this was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can support us via super thanks. See you in next video.